Hi third graders, we're going to start a new topic for science this week. It's called climate. If you're not sure what climate means, well then you've come to the right place because you're going to learn all about it today. So grab your climate um, packet and follow along as you listen. On this page, in the middle, it says the essential question. How can you explain what climate is like in different places? Well, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to answer that question. And then you should be able to take what you learned and do the show what you know. It says, how can you describe what the weather is like where polar bears live? Well, after this lesson, again, that's something that you'll be able to answer. On this page, we have the quest kickoff. This is just to get your interest in um, learning about climates. At the top, it says climates on location. Where should we film a movie? Phenomenon. Hello there, my name is James Scotto. I am a movie location scout. I travel around the world to find amazing places to film different movies. I need your help to choose locations for a new movie. The movie will take place throughout a whole year. It needs to feature different weather. It also needs to be filmed in just a few months. In this quest, you will identify what the actors can do in different kinds of weather. You will use patterns to select locations for filming. Follow the path to learn how to complete the quest. The quest activities in the lessons will help you complete the quest. Check off your progress on the path when you complete an activity with a quest checkoff. Go online for more quest activities. Then down at the bottom it says quest check-in number one. Lesson one. Think about some different scenes the movie will need. Identify the types of weather that should be featured in the movie. All right, this is just something to get you thinking about why weather around the world is important. And this is a great example for people that work in the movie industry. They would like to know what different parts of, or what the weather is like in different parts of the world. So that's one reason it's important to learn about climates around the world. As we read through this climate packet, you'll be able to participate in the uh, different quest check-ins. So lesson two, lesson three, and then down at the bottom, quest findings, present your research. So this is just something to keep you on track so that you can tell the movie producer where you want to film and explain why you chose those different locations around the world. Here on page 130, you have an optional connect lab. The question that you will find the answer to says, how does temperature change on a mountain? So if you are interested, this is something that you can do at home and research how the temperature changes on a mountain. Even though we're learning about science as we read, this is an example of how science ties into what you're learning in reading. This happens to be an example of how to compare and contrast, which is something that we're gonna work on a little bit down the road, but it's never too early to start thinking about it. So follow along with me as I read under the heading compare and contrast. When you compare and contrast, you identify how things are alike and different. When you compare, you find how they are alike. When you contrast, you find how they are different. Okay, and this paragraph here in the middle of the page is um, information on weather and climate and at the bottom it has a reading check on something that you can do on your own to uh, see if you were able to compare and contrast the information in the article. So let's read weather and climate. Weather is always happening. It is always changing too. One moment you may be sitting on a beach. The weather is warm and sunny. Suddenly, winds begin to blow. Rain clouds cover the sky. The weather quickly becomes cold and rainy. It is time to leave the beach. You can come back the next day because you know the beach is usually sunny and warm. 
climate is what kind of weather a place usually has over a long time. Every location has a climate. Some places get very cold, other places are very warm. This caribou, in the circle in the picture, this caribou has thick fur because its home is usually very cold. Climates are always changing too, but it takes a longer time to happen. Climates change much more slowly than weather. Here on page 132, we start our lesson on climates. You can see the learning target off to the side. It says, I can describe some factors that affect climate. So think about that as I read. Also, you have some vocabulary words that you're going to look for as I read. Climate, polar, temperate, tropical, equator, latitude, and elevation. And hint, hint, when you see those words written in bold print, I'd pay really close attention because those are going to be the words that you're going to have to define on your um, assignment in Schoology. Or if you're a hybrid student, you got um, the paper copy to write on. All right, so follow along with me. We're under the green arrow where it says sports connection. How far would you have to go to find a different climate? If you were climbing a mountain, you might not have to go far. According to one climate classification system, Earth has 14 different kinds of climate. 10 of them are on the big island of Hawaii. The east shore of the island is warm and wet all year. As you move west on the island, the road quickly climbs higher. The weather gets drier and cooler as you walk. You are actually hiking up, hiking up Mauna Kea Volcano. The visitor center is 2,800 meters above sea level. The few plants there are very different from those at lower levels. If you hike to the top of Mauna Kea, you will be more than 4,200 meters above sea level. The weather there is always cold and very dry. Walk west and down the mountain. You will find a hot desert. Here on page 133, you have another optional lab. It's called Investigate Lab. How does the sun's radiation vary on Earth's surface? So if you have a flashlight, a ball, and colored tape at home. This is an, an, an experiment you are more than welcome to try. All right, keep your ears open because on this page you're going to find some important information that you're going to need to answer the questions about our reading today. So the heading on this page says climate characteristics. That's going to give us some more information about what climate is. So listen carefully. Can you predict what the weather will be next month or next season? There is no way to know exactly. You might be able to make a good guess, though. We know what weather will most likely be like at a certain time and place during each part of the year. Scientists have gathered data that show that weather follows certain patterns. The pattern of weather conditions that occur in a certain area over a long period is called climate. A climate is usually described as average temperature and precipitation. Remember, temperature is how hot or cold something is and, or a place is. And precipitation is how much moisture an area gets. So remember, what does climate mean? That's going to be important for later. Not all of Earth has the same climate. Each region of the Earth has its own type of climate. Okay, and I'm going to put describe polar climate, describe temperate climate, and describe tropical climate. You're going to need to know this, so listen carefully. Each 
Earth's main climate regions are polar, temperate, and tropical. So when we're talking about um, climate regions, that means different parts of the Earth. So some parts of the Earth have a polar climate, some have a temperate climate, and some have a tropical climate. Well, follow along with me so that you can describe what a polar climate means, what a temperate climate means, and what a tropical climate means. A polar climate is very cold and dry. A temperate climate is mild. It usually has big differences between seasonal weather patterns. A tropical climate is warm throughout the year. A main factor that determines whether climate, whether climate is polar, temperate, or tropical is where on earth the place is located. All right, I want you to think where do you what kind of what kind of climate do you think we live in here? We probably would be um, in the temperate climate. We don't have super, super hot summers and super, super cold winters, but we do have different seasons. So during the winter, it is cold. During the spring, it warms up. During the summer, it's hot. And during the fall, it cools down again. So you can usually tell the difference between our seasonal weather, depending on what season it is. But it's not a huge, difference in the um, in the different types of weather that we have throughout the year. So we would live in about a, a temperate climate. So there are four different factors that affect the climate in areas. And one particular um, factor is the sun. The sun is one factor that affects climate. So let's read how the sun affects how our temperature is where we live and where and other how the sun affects other parts of the world. The sun constantly sends energy toward Earth. This energy heats Earth's atmosphere, water, and land. Each of these Earth systems heats differently. The differences in heating patterns affect weather and climate. Not every place on Earth gets an equal share of the sun's energy. Areas closest to the equator get the most energy. So I put a question over here to the side. Well, what is the equator? The equator is an imaginary line around the middle of the planet. It divides the Earth into northern and southern halves, the areas farthest away from the equator, like the North Pole and the South Pole, get the least amount of the sun's energy. These patterns cl cause climates to be more extreme near the equator and the Earth's North and South Poles. Here on page 136, we have another factor that affects climate, and it is called latitude. So that brings us to the question, what is latitude? Well, let's read and see what latitude is and how it affects climate. Latitude is a measure of how far north or south of the equator a place is. I'm going to show you the equator on this globe here, right here where this red line is. Do you see how the Earth is cut in half? The top half is called the northern hemisphere and the southern half is the lower one. So when we are talking about latitude, we're talking about how far north from the equator something is or how far south something from the equator is. And it says the definition is a measure of how far north or south of the equator a place is. Uh, let's go down to the second paragraph. In the diagram, the North Pole is tilted toward the sun. So notice up at the top here, this is the North Pole. And notice how it's tilted toward the sun. This uh, yellow is the sun. It is the start of 
summer in the northern hemisphere, so this top part of the Earth. And that would be around June 21st. The area north of the Arctic Circle will get sunlight all day long. At the start of winter, around December 21st, this area will receive no direct sunlight at all. At the start of the summer in the Arctic, it will be dark all day long in the area south of the Antarctic Circle. Seasons north and south of the equator are opposite. Here on page 137, we see another factor that affects climate, and it is the ocean. So let's read about how the ocean affects climate. About 70% of Earth is covered by ocean water. The sun's energy warms the ocean water. As the water warms, it evaporates. That means it kind of it turns into a gas and goes up into the atmosphere. It evaporates more quickly into the atmosphere. Winds then move the water over land. Eventually, the water falls as precipitation. This is why areas near the ocean usually get more precipitation. Remember, that's coming from the sky, some sort of moisture or wet, like rain, sleet, um, and snow. Lands near the ocean have milder winters. That means they're not very cold and cooler summers than kinds, than kinds in the middle of continents. This is because water changes temperature more slowly than the land would change temperature. In the winter, the ocean is warmer than the land. In the summer, the ocean is cooler than the land. All right, and we are now on our fourth factor that affects climate, which is land or land features. So let's read how this affects climate. Mountaineers, people who climb mountains, must be prepared for constant changes in temperature as they climb. Higher elevations tend to be cooler. Well, what does elevation mean? Elevation is the measure of how high above ground something is. At sea level, elevation is zero. As the mountaineers climb up the mountain, temperatures get colder. The temperature at the bottom of the mountain might be zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. At the top of that same mountain, the temperature might be negative 15 degrees Celsius or five degrees Fahrenheit. Tall mountains affect climate in another way. Winds generally flow in the same direction. A wind moves toward a mountain, the air slows and moves upward and over the mountain. The side of the mountain that the wind reaches first will get plenty of rain. The other side will get little rain. The reason is because the air cools as it moves upward. Precipitation forms in the cooler air. And our last page of this lesson, the heading says the atmosphere and climate. Without an atmosphere, the earth would not have climate. Instead, Earth would be a ball of ice and rock. Certain gases in our atmosphere trap heat from the sun. The trapped heat warms Earth's land and water. It keeps temperatures on the Earth steady so that living things can survive. All right, boys and girls, I wanna bring your attention to this question number two down here. It says, what are four factors that affect climate? This is one of the questions that you will answer on your um, assignment about this reading. So if you were paying attention, I gave you all of those factors. If you don't remember, go back and watch the video again. 
All right, so if you're a hybrid group, you have a piece of paper to fill out with questions about this reading. Mm -hmm. If you are an online learner, you will be filling out the questions in Schoology. Good luck, boys and girls, and we'll see you next time.